We were talking about the Clements reduction, uh, theater ketal, Mozingo, uh, you know, reaction, and, and the wolf kessner reaction. Okay, so if I take in the Clements reduction, if I take acetone, okay, any carbonyl, okay, ketone amine, and I add zinc and HCl, okay, well, and zinc and mercury rather, zinc and mercury and HCl, this is in acidic conditions. So this is an acidic condition, and what this does is that that reduces my ketone and I have my alkane, okay. Now, with the theta keto mozinga reaction, okay, I take a carbon, a ketone, okay, rather, okay, and I use a dithiol, okay, so this molecule is very common, okay, and what this does is that I form an intermediate, okay, okay, like this, and then I use a catalyst, okay. And the catalyst is usually uh, hydrogen gas and nickel, okay? And once I form hydrogen gas and nickel, I get my alkane, okay? Now, the wolf kessner reaction is the same thing. Well, and, uh, a point of reference here, uh, this reaction is not very popular. It, it is common, but not... Um, most organic chemistry class don't learn this, and the reason why is that, you know, like sulfur chemistry stink, okay? If you ever smell, if you ever deal with sulfur, the chemistry stink, and, and usually in chemistry, you want clean, nice organic synthesis. So this reaction is very popular, but not that in, compar in comparison with you know, Clements and, and uh, wolf Keschner. so I'll throw it out there. Now, the wolf Keschner, okay, I take a ketone, okay, and I use this molecule here. N2H, N2H on both sides. So I use this molecule here in potassium hydroxide, okay? And this is on the basic conditions. So this is on the basic conditions. And what this does is that that gives me also my, my alkane, okay? Now, we need to know the reactions of Clements and Theoketo, but what's what's most important is that we need to know the reaction mechanism of uh, this 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 wolf kessner reaction here. So let's start off, okay? So if I take acetone, okay, this simple ketone, I'm gonna use the simplest ketone, and add NH2, NH2. Well, I have two lone pairs on my nitrogen. Okay, so this is going to be my nucleophile. So it's going to readily attack my carbonyl compound. Okay, and I'm going to break this bond and put those electrons on the oxygen. So in the intermediate, I form something that looks like this. I get an oxygen that's negatively charged. Okay, I have my nitrogen that has uh, four bonds. Okay, so that means it's an automatic plus charge. Okay. Now, these protons around the nitrogen is relatively acidic. So in the next step, hydroxide, okay, hydroxide is going to come in and act as a base. So it's going to take, deprotonate, take one of these hydrogens off and give a nitrogen the lone pair. Now, in this step, we form water. Okay, so let's redraw our structure. Okay, so in this step, we reform water. Okay, now what's going to happen? Water is going to come in in the next step. And this is relatively nucleophilic, basic out of it. So it's going to grab one of the hydrogens and reform hydroxide. Okay, so now we're going to come to a, a point that's neutral. Okay, our molecule is neutral. Okay, now what's going to happen in the second step? Oh, well, not in the second step, but in the next step. Okay, we're going to have hydroxide that's going to come in. And remember we said hydroxide is relatively basic, and these not the, these, the, uh, the hydrogens attached to the, nox uh, to the nitrogen is relatively acidic. So it's going to come in, act as a base, take off the hydrogen, and form a double bond and kicking off hydroxide. Okay, now once we do that, once we do that, we form the hydrosome. Okay, so we get a double bond to nitrogen. Uh, we have a nitrogen that's bonded to two H's. Okay, so we form the hydrosome.
okay? So in the next step, now these are my relatively acidic protons, okay? These are my relatively acidic protons. So hydroxide is gonna come in and act as a base to grab one of these hydrogens. Well, what is that gonna do? Once it grab one of these hydrogens, I'm gonna kick off the bond and form lone pairs on the oxygen on the on the on the adjacent nitrogen. So now I get to a structure that looks like this. We have nitrogen that now has two lone pairs. Okay, nitrogen two lone pairs two bonds. That's an automatic negative charge. Okay. Now in the next step, these lone pairs are actually going to come in, form a double bond. Okay, so it's going to form a double bond. And these these pi electrons are going to kick in as uh, kick on on the carbon as as lone pairs. Okay, so maybe we should draw what that looks like. So now I have my single bond, and I have my negative charge on the carbon. Okay, now lone pairs look something like this. Okay, so in the next step, water is going to come in. Okay, and the next step, water is going to come in. And now this is very basic. So this is looking for hydrogen. Carbon cations are relatively unstable. So this is looking for hydrogen. So what it will actually do is that it will grab a hydrogen and reform hydroxide in the solution. Okay, and once we do that, we add one hydrogen to our, uh, to our, our, our carbon of interest. And we still have this whole nitrogen group here. Okay. Now in the next step, we need to add one more hydrogen to this molecule. So the only way for this to, to happen is that hydroxide is actually going to come in again and act as a base. Okay. It's going to take one of these hydrogens off and reform uh, 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 and put those put the bond in, in in form of lone pairs. Okay. So what I'll actually form is. So level hydrogen. So what I'll actually form is our nitrogen that's double bonded to the other nitrogen that now has four lone pairs. That gives it a negative one formal charge. Now in the next step, these electrons are going to come in, form a triple bond. Okay. Now once I form the triple bond, the bond is going to break in the form of lone pairs on the carbon. And so we form, generate another carbon cation solution. Okay. We still have our hydrogen, but look, we form this. We form nitrogen, we form nitrogen N2 gas, and this will actually bubble out in solution. You'll actually see this bubble out in solution. This is very important, okay? All that we've been doing so far is irreversible. Uh, the reaction is in equilibrium, but at this point, all the reaction is drived forward, okay? This is, non, this is irreversible because nitrogen gas, this molecule is very, very stable, in fact, uh, in fact, a majority of the atmosphere is actually made up of, of, of nitrogen, you know, with argon being the third most abundant. Okay, so at this point, the reaction, the, the, the reaction is irreversible. Okay, and on the next step, the water that we just formed. Uh, okay, this is very basic. So it's looking for hydrogen. So it will seek a hydrogen from water and reform hydroxide in solution, and we get we get propane. Okay, we have propane solution. So this is a detailed mechanism of the wolf kashner reaction. This is what you should know. Uh, again, uh, notice the difference between the um, the wolf kashner and the Clemenson. In Clemenson, we're doing acidic conditions in mercury and HCl. And then um, in, in wolf kashner we're doing a basic condition uh, with nitrogen. Uh, and again, theater keto, mozingo, again, sulfur. It's a very stink molecule, so we tend not to to like sulfur chemistry, but hey, it's there.